The BH curve of a permanent magnet describes the relationship between the magnet's own flux density, the B axis, and an applied magnetizing force, the H axis. When a permanent magnet is outside the influence of an external magnetizing force, it will produce a flux density equivalent to its retentivity point as indicated by the red dot. If a sufficiently strong external magnetizing force is applied to the permanent magnet, the magnet reaches saturation as indicated by the second dot. This external magnetizing force can be produced, for example, by the introduction of a second strong permanent magnet. This movement along the BH curve causes the permanent magnet to produce a stronger flux field. Any magnetic material within the field of the permanent magnet will subsequently see a variation in force acting on it. Although magnetic fields propagate at the speed of light, the change in the flux density produced by the permanent magnet is not instantaneous. Its movement from the point of retentivity to the point of saturation takes a finite time. This can vary from several microseconds through to several seconds. Hence, the effect of magnetic viscosity can be described as a force variation with respect to time. The rest of this video sets out to describe a simple test method that will demonstrate this effect. The first part of the test setup is a very small, light wheel that freely rotates. Embedded within the wheel are small neodymium permanent magnets. The wheel and base are clamped firmly to a bench. Note that the bench itself is non-metallic. Around the circumference of the wheel we have placed black tape and a small white strip. This white strip is important since we are going to use a non-contact laser tachometer to read the speed of the wheel as it rotates. Next, the tachometer is added into the system. This tachometer has an analog output. This analog output will be fed into a data acquisition system so that we can record the speed of the wheel as it changes with respect to time. Finally, a large block of neodymium magnet is securely fastened beside the wheel. The purpose of this first part of the test is to determine the impact of this large neodymium block on the magnets within the wheel. With all the parts in place, we are ready to start the test. The wheel is spun up to speed using compressed air. A data acquisition system is used to sample the analog output from the laser tachometer. This allows us to record the speed of the wheel as it changes with respect to time. The wheel will shed its kinetic energy as it slows down. This kinetic energy is lost due to friction in the bearings, air resistance, any eddy currents generated in near metallic objects, and finally due to the influence of the large neodymium block magnet that we place in the experiment. The purpose of this experiment is to measure the impact of the large neodymium block magnet on the small neodymium magnets in the rotating wheel. In order to understand and to be able to assess this we need to create a control experiment. So the experiment is repeated with the large neodymium magnet being replaced by a piece of perspex which is non-magnetic of equal size the experiment is repeated. The final part of the experiment is to analyze the data recorded by the data acquisition system and draw a conclusion. First we plot the data from the control experiment. We're plotting its rate of deceleration with respect to its own speed. The wheel will lose kinetic energy due to wind resistance, friction in the bearings and any anti currents induced on metallic objects nearby. As we can see, the wheel slows down in a perfectly normal fashion. Next, we plot the data from the experiment with the large neodymium magnet in place. As we can see from the chart, the wheel decelerates at a lot faster rate. This increase in the rate of deceleration is primarily due to the fact that the large neodymium magnet will act on the small magnets in the wheel and increase the friction on the bearings. So what we're seeing here is primarily an increase in friction of the system. Our final data set in this experiment involves four small magnets placed in the rotating wheel acting with the large neodymium magnet. Again, we can see that the rate of deceleration increases. Again, this is primarily due to the fact 
that there is increased magnetic load on the bearings and hence an increase in friction. The addition of a green bar to the final chart can help us to explain these results. To the right of the green bar and at higher speeds we can see that the magnetic forces acting between the small neodymium magnets and the large block magnet are smaller than those to the left. To the right of the green bar the small magnets are travelling at such a speed through the field of the large magnet that they do not have time to react to the field. Hence the force acting between the small magnets and the large magnet is as a result of the small magnets staying at their point of retentivity. To the left of the green bar the small magnets have plenty of time to react. Hence the magnetic forces acting between the small magnets and the large block magnet are as a result of these magnets being saturated and so the forces acting are higher. Finally by examining the speed range of the green zone we can calculate the viscous reaction time of the small neodymium magnets. We calculate this by looking at the relative speed of the small magnet with respect to the large magnet and the distance travelled. In this case we conclude that the small magnets have a viscous response time of approximately one millisecond. Hence we can conclude that ferromagnetic materials have a force time response curve as dictated by magnetic viscosity.